Hello guys, welcome to KCT 2023 one-shot series. <clears throat> Today's topic will be gravitation, and as you can see, it says 1.8, which means um, approximately 1.8 questions have come every year, which means few years there have been two questions from this chapter, and um, most of the time there has been one question from this chapter. So yeah, you can keep a note of it in order to make sure um, that you understand how much importance you have to give to these class 11 chapters. So um, yeah, I think I'll proceed. But before that, I want to let you guys know that uh, I'm using a mouse. So while I'm writing on the screen, it might be you know uh, it might be bad hand it might be my bad handwriting. So I want you to um, um, pardon me for that. So now I'll be proceeding. First topic will be Newton's universal law of gravitation, and this is uh, pretty popular. I mean, you've been learning it most probably from ninth grade or something. So what it states is if there's a body of mass m1 and if there's a body of mass m2, then the um, force of, uh, you know, attractive force, it, you have to keep in mind that the force is always going to be attractive in case of this gravitational force. The force, attractive fo force, is always going to be directly proportional to the um, product of the masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. So as you can see, between these masses, uh, the distance is r, so it'll be r square. And I've put a mod to indicate that uh, it's going to be free of sign. Otherwise, you have to include the sign. So I'll be talking about it in the next part of it. So yeah, I'll try to put a box around the formula uh, wherever possible. Um, now I'll be I'll be going on to the next part, which will be Newton's yeah that'll be vector form of Newton's universal law of gravitation. So as you can see, uh, if there's if we have taken the same case, but now it is uh, represented in vector form. So if mass m1 has position vector r1 and uh, likewise for m2, and if this is r the distance between, then we can give force of like f21 means force on uh, two attractive force on two due to one like gravitational force of attraction on two due to one so with the sign uh, is equal to minus or here as you can see r the magnitude of r21 so everything related to vectors and everything have been taught under uh, straight lines chapter uh, motion uh, in 2d i think so in that i've taught vectors in the beginning so you can watch them i won't be teaching the prerequis uh, prerequisites again and again you have to watch the lectures in my flow uh, in order to make sure that you won't get confused with the prerequisites so this would be um, a magnitude of r21 with a yeah vector form square and this is going to be unit vector r21 and as you know from vectors chapter this uh, one thing that you have to know is this and the other thing that you have to know is the unit vector r21 can be represented by r21 bar divided by magnitude of r21 so while you substitute this with that then we'll be getting this uh, but now if you observe it's a line it's not a unit vector anymore so yeah i'll be putting a box on around this one um, both are actually important but i'll be just you know like one representation if you understand then the other representation can be easily understood this way uh, we'll be able to yeah proceed further next one will be acceleration due to gravity so acceleration due to gravity is it's fairly simple um, in this diagram actually I have indicated that an object is being thrown within the earth like it doesn't mean it's falling from the outside I've tried to make it like um, in that way maybe it seems like that but actually what's happening is you're throwing something inside the earth so it will fall down it will always be towards the center of the body which means in this case body can be replaced by earth so it's always towards the center of the earth and over here um, we can give it by this formula g small g is equal to capital G m by r square and over here r square where r is the radius of the earth and m m is mass of the earth so another thing that you have to know is that uh, in this case we can write force of gravity divided by m naught which means the body which is being thrown within the earth is equal to g and um, yeah this value is approximately 9.8 meter per second square as we have as we know it today so i'll be just highlighting the important parts and this too will be a formula but it'll come under anyways uh, gravitational in intensity similar one so gravitational field or gravitational in intensity um, as you can see it's going to be like let's say there's a test mass of mass m naught and there is a body m and the distance between them is r then over here the formula is going to be this um, the formula is going to be coming from the fact that it's going to be force of gravity divided by m naught, so this, the m naught will get cancelled, and that will become g capital M r square. So the difference is over here r was the radius of the earth, or here r is the distance between the objects. So this formula is basically not equal to this, but uh, yeah, we'll get it as 9.8 or here as fixed because r is a constant and m is a constant as we know both the values. So now gravitational field in two cases we'll be observing. I know that there is going to be ring and straight line and all those cases, but I'll be telling uh, you the trick in electric f uh, electric fields and charges where electric charges and fields where you can actually apply the same concept in gravitation by just replacing um, k with g and Q with them. So I'll be just doing these two, which would be important throughout this chapter. Because solid sphere, one, you have to keep it in your mind, is equal to earth in this chapter. Like earth, whenever you talk about earth in derivations, you should use the formula of solid sphere. So this graph is gravitational intensity versus the distance away from it. So let's say we take this uh, solid sphere. Then if an object is, let's say, over here, then it is case one. As you can see in the graph, it's going up, like it's going uh, in a linear fashion. That's when R is less than capital R, where capital R is radius, by the way, radius of this solid sphere. So let's say the object is somewhere here, then it's case one. And for that, the formula would be this, uh, capital G M small r by r, uh, r cube where capital R is radius of the earth and r is distance from the center of the solid sphere distance of the yeah, distance of the point from the center of the solid sphere so beyond the, at this point it's going to be just on the surface of the solid sphere so for that the formula would be just um, using the gravitational intensity formula and when let's say we take case 3 which means it's anywhere outside the solid sphere at a distance small r where r is greater than r as you can see in that case the formula would be the same but it will be small r square in the denominator so the same thing for hollow sphere one thing that you have to know is um, r when it's equal like when it comes to this case 3 which is the first case over here inside the hollow sphere the intensity will always be zero gravitational intensity will always be zero whereas when we talk about this case one which is on the surface of the hollow sphere there will be uh, equal to the same as solid sphere like it's the same thing as it was in the solid sphere and for case two where it's outside the hollow sphere 
um, then in that case it will be the same as for solid sphere. So yeah, I have to note that we are measuring the distance from the center of the hollow sphere, whether it's over here or whether it's over here or whether it's over here. When it's on the surface, it will be equal to the like small r will be equal to capital R, as you can see over here. So yeah, we have to keep those cases in mind from where to measure and all of it. Next one will be gravitational potential energy. So there will be two uh, two cases that I'll be mentioning. One is like where there is planet like there's a there's a mass of m of radius r and a small uh, body m small m at a height h from the surface, not from the center. Over here, h from the surface. So in that case, uh, we can write u h is equal to like it's going to be from this formula. This formula, uh, let's say there, there are two bodies of m1 and m2 mass separated by distance small r, then potential is equal to minus, the sign is important, minus capital G m1 m2 by r. So using this formula over here, small r distance between the objects over here, that will become h plus r, right? Like r over here will be equal to r plus h, h being the distance from the surface. So yeah, we have just replaced that in the denominator, it's the same formula if you observe. And over here the special case is like, we can use the same formula, but the special case over here would be when h is less than, less than equal, like less than, less than r. In that case, in that case h plus r will approximate, approximately be equal to r. So yeah, you have to know this type of approximation, you'll be coming across it a lot during derivations, where it'll be like h plus capital R is equal, like when less than, less than r, uh, sorry, h plus r would be approximately equal to r when this is the case. So that will become mgr as the final formula, when this is the case. So you cannot apply it every single time. Next one would be Kepler's law of planetary motions. So first one would be law of orbit, it's uh, simple. It just states that planets revolve around um, the, yeah, they revolve around in an elliptical orbit. And also it states the fact that the star would be in one of the foci of the ellipse. If you don't know about the ellipse and what a foci is, I'll quickly explain it. So this, this is the ellipse. Uh, these two would be called as, these two points would be called as the foci. And uh, yeah, I'll be explaining about the same image axis later. So as you can see over here, there's a planet. And I know the star is very small in comparison to the planet. Uh, pardon me, it's because of the space actually. And next one would be law of period. As you can see, law of period, you have to know this. The law actually, there's a statement in NCRT, but I'll be just writing the formula, where small a is actually semi-major axis of the eclipse. So that's something that you have to keep in mind. What is semi-major axis? Semi-major axis would be, uh, you can, I think this would be done in conic sections in class 11, typically along this chapter. So you would know what semi-major axis is. But if you don't know, then it'll be like, uh, if entire thing is 2a, the major axis of the ellipse, then semi-major axis would be just a. So that's one thing that I have to keep in mind. So yeah, now uh, next part would be, uh, yeah, I hope you understood this law of period. That is called law of period. This is called law of orbit. Now the next, the third law would be law of area. So over here, dA by dt, like I'll explain it with the diagram. So let's say there are there is a there is like ellipse and there's a star over here in one of the foci. So what it states is the like the aerial velocity of the planet, this planet coming from here to here is v1. And the planet coming from here to this point is going to be way two. It's the second way the planet can come to this point. So that would be another aerial uh, aerial velocity. So what it states is it'll be the same over here. The aerial velocity will be the same whether it's v1 or v2. In the same time, whatever the area is sweep uh, is swept by the body. Like it states that whatever the area is swept by the body in the specific time would be same uh, in any part of the ellipse. So that's why it would be dA by dt is equal to where this is aerial velocity as it's mentioned. dA by dt is aerial velocity is equal to L by 2m where L is angular uh, momentum divided by 2m where m is mass of the body is equal to constant. So that's what it states. This uh, The first part of it is important. dA by dt is equal to L by 2m. It has come in JE, JEE before and you can expect it in CET too. Next one will be effect of height, depth or rotation on cap uh, on G, like effect of these three on um, acceleration due to gravity. So G over here is going to be throughout is equal to 9.8, like approximately. And G effective is going to be the new altered uh, acceleration due to gravity due to these effects. Like for example, due to the effect of altitude, the uh, like acceleration due to gravity is now is equal to um, new gravitational, act uh, new acceleration due to gravity, which, which is G effective. And that, that is given by this formula over here, as you can see. And uh, another case is under it. Actually, the quality is pretty bad, like in comparison to the other pictures. I'm not sure why, but I just uh, went went with it because I thought it was still visible. So yeah, that's. Okay, so next one would be if h is less than less than r. So as I mentioned, this approximation will be coming across very frequently. If h is less than less than r, then this entire term would actually be equal to approximately nothing, right? It would be close to zero. So it would be one plus zero. And now uh, by binomial approximation, uh, when we use the approximation, final formula, it will be this, as you can see. This one would come into handy because usually the cases would be h uh, is less than less than r. Uh, would be the usual case. So this formula is very important, as you can see, I've put the box. But yeah, you have to know both, both of them. You have to know both of them. That is effect of altitude. So this was this was effect of altitude. Whereas you can see small h over here is the distance of the body from the surface, and capital R is radius of the planet or the uh, body. Next one would be effect of depth. So it's almost the same over here. The body is at a uh, at a distance h from the surface, and uh, keep in mind it's not from the center; it's from the surface. Uh, h from the surface so at a distance h from the at the depth as a at the depth h from the surface and capital R would be radius of the planet. So in that case, the new altered acceleration due to gravity would be equal to g bracket 1 minus h by r. Um, it's going to be the same as above almost if you observe. So you can somehow remember it that way. And this is of course after approximation. So next one, uh, no, this is actually not by approximation. It's You can check the derivation in NCRT. You have to use the uh, fact at the top as you can see. I've yeah, here if you observe this part, 
is going to be used a lot throughout the chapter. That's why I didn't like put a box around it back then, so I could tell it now. Um, if the, the same formula, if you rearrange it, it would be gm is equal to small g r square. So this would be substituted a lot, even in the uh, velocity part of the satellite and all of it. That, that I'll be about to explain. So you have to keep that in mind. Next one would be effect of rotation, typically ignored by teachers, but I have a feeling this would be coming sometime soon because they haven't asked from it, and it's there in the NCRT, including the derivation. So effect of rotation would be uh, capital R, where radius of the planet, and omega is going to be the angular velocity with which the planet is spinning around its axis of rotation. And theta over here would be the, uh, as you can see, the angle when it's given like this, the angle, you have to just note it down, it should be like this. So in that case, the new g, which is acceleration due to gravity, new acceleration due to gravity, which is given by g effective, as you can see, g e g f f g e f f means um, gravitation, uh, gravitational value effective. That would be equal to g minus omega square r cos square theta. And uh, it's obvious that when we talk about the equator, when we come to the equator, theta would be equal to zero. So that that way, g effective would be equal to g minus r omega square because cos uh, cosine of zero cosine zero degree is equal to uh, is equal to one, and cosine ninety degree is equal to zero. So that way, poles when we talk about the pole, right? That time the theta would be equal to 90 degree. So g effective would be equal to small g because the other term will completely get cancelled. This is why the pole, uh, at the pole, acceleration due to gravity is more than at the equator. And that's why we observe the bulge. Um, it, you can kind of like get the feeling for it now. So get the feel for it now actually. Next one would be satellites, as you can see. So under it, there would be a couple of things that I want to um, mention. First one would be the uh, orbital velocity. VO means orbital velocity. That is given by under root capital G M by R, where R is the distance of the satellite or basically the orbit in which the satellite is revolving from the center of the earth. And when we substitute m and r as a value, like well, let's say small r is approximately equal to r, which means the orbit is very close to the surface of the earth. So it would be approximately equal to capital R, let's say, and mass is, let's say, uh, as of the earth. In that case, the value would be this much. So yeah, for this approximation, you can keep this value in your mind. It's called orbital speed. Next would be time period. So you can see there's a huge formula in NCRT, but it's actually derived by just using this formula, where if you remember, it was speed is equal to distance by time, the one which we have learned it from a very low, uh, like from very small age. And that one, if you replace, if you write rearrange it as t is equal to d by s, where d is going to be the distance, which is a circumference, so 2 pi small r, divided by velocity, which is the orbital velocity, as I mentioned in formula here. When you substitute it, and if you take the approximation as uh, when h is less than, less than r, in that case, or here yeah, I've mentioned small r is equal to r plus h, where h is the distance from the surface of the planet, and r capital R is the radius of the planet. So while you use that approximation, you'll be getting this popular formula. Which will be coming, which will be coming across in SHM for uh, whole through, uh, like whole through the tunnel through the Earth. So yeah, you can keep this in your mind too. Next one would be energy of a satellite. So total energy, as you remember, it is potential energy plus kinetic energy, which I mentioned in work power energy. So I already mentioned potential energy and kinetic energy, as you know, is half m v square. So here v will be basically orbital velocity. This one. So that would be when replaced, you'll be getting this formula. So when you um, add the two, you'll be finally getting total energy formula as this one. So total energy basically is equal to minus the kinetic energy, which is equal to potential energy by 2. This would be very important uh, because if you remember this, it will be again coming across it in even uh, further class 12 chapter, modern physics, and many more chapters. So yeah, that part is done now. Next one, we are almost at the end of the chapter, by the way. So yeah, next one would be types of satellite. One is geostationary satellite, and next one is polar satellite. So here, time period is 24 hours. Distance of the uh, of the satellite from the uh, planet, like surface, is going to be 36,000 kilometers, and v orbital is equal to 3.1 kilometer per second. So polar is basically 84 minutes. 800 kilometers and v orbital is 8 kilometers per second. So you can read further information about it in the NCRT. It's given um, in a very nice way, so it would help you understand. Next one would be escape speed. So for escape speed, we have to know the derivation more than the formula. The formula is of course written over here. Uh, I've just written it, which is going to be two capital two G M by R. But what you have to notice is this, guy, this is subject to change. Like this is going to change, and um, of course, even though you, have, you can replace the value directly, but you have to you have to know the derivation and keep it in your mind that I'll be, I'll be like you, you have to use the same substitution which I've mentioned at the top to get the final formula, which we already know or you might know would be two G capital R. This is equal to velo escape velocity. And for Earth, it's I think 11.2. I'm not sure. Uh, you can check NCRT for the value, but it's approximately. 11.2 if I'm not wrong, but it depends on the question. Usually what they do is they can give a different planet, especially in uh, entrances like uh, JWE exam, you'll be finding that they rely on the derivation. So if there's a body of uh, capital M, like a huge planet and a small body of capital small M, so to, in order to escape the field, then it has to reach to a point infinity. And as you know, potential on the surface would be um, given by this formula. And th during that time, like when it's on the surface, kinetic energy will be, we'll be using COME by the way conservation of uh, mechanical energy. So that would be u initial plus u phi, uh, plus k initial is equal to u final plus k final. So using that u initial would be this, k initial would be this, is equal to u final, as you know, at infinity potential will be equal to zero. And this would be half m v e square, escape velocity square. So when you rearrange it, you'll be getting this formula. But uh, if they have, let's say they have given something like, uh, they've changed r or something, then you have to make sure that you even substitute it, like, replace it over here. So yeah, I think with this, I have completed the chapter, uh, which was like important. You have to just give a read of NCRT and watch the orientation session to know what to do after you watch these lectures. So I hope it was helpful. Uh, you can like the videos, share, subscribe, and yeah, all the best. See you.